there's so much to see here. All kinds of beautiful pre-war cars, all restored, some original, back from when a time where there was true coach builders around. Speaking of coach builders, this is actually a 1924 Rio and it is a funeral coach. And people are dying to get in this ride. As a matter of fact, uh, they were doing it with a little bit of a buzz because this thing was actually converted to haul liquor illegally during Prohibition. This is awesome. It's a beautiful represented piece of history, but that's not what we're here for. There's an Indian display downstairs we gotta go check out. The very first Indian motorcycle prototype was built in 1901. They made six bikes that year. So it's great to see fully restored versions, but what really lights me up are these unrestored originals. The 1907 Indian, 1906 Indian Camelback. These are touched only by time. This is a restoration manual wrapped up in a motorcycle. And the fact that nobody's ever had these apart, it's just awesome to see. But one of the coolest things that we've seen here is this Briggs & Stratton motor wheel. Check this thing out. Briggs & Stratton may best be known as a manufacturer of quality engines for lawnmowers and minibikes, but in the early 20th century, they were a manufacturer of automotive accessories and made a large investment in their company to diversify into production vehicles. They purchased the rights to a buckboard-type vehicle called the Smith Motor Wheel and then increased its engine output by doubling it from 1 to 2 horsepower. Wow! And then renamed it the Briggs & Stratton Flyer. This machine was produced from 1919 to 1923, and this Model J Flyer had a base price of $175, about the cost of a monthly Starbucks bill. It's just a really cool machine. I love the fenders and little gas tank, and the fan to cool it. And how about the bucket seats and all the wood? And get this, when you start the engine, the drive wheel is always running. The shifter isn't really a shifter, it just simply is a lever that lifts the rear drive wheel off the ground for neutral and puts it on the ground to go, kind of like an engineered burnout. Because when the engine is running, the drive wheel is always turning. So you might be wondering how it stops. Well, when you push the brake pedal, it presses the fender against the tire, kind of like getting your foot caught in the spokes, and we all know that that can be a tad dramatic. These motor wheels were actually considered roadworthy back then. Now here's a beauty, a 1906 Indian Camelback. Not camel toe, camelback. Indian produced their first motorcycle in 1901 and had begun production by 1903. By 1906, they were able to produce 1,698 of these camelback motorcycles in a year at the cost of $210 each to the customers. The name Camelback wasn't actually the official name of this bike, it was actually a nickname given to it years later because of the humped fuel tag behind the seat. It has a diamond frame, like those used on bicycles, but this model is a chain drive, unlike many early bikes which used leather drive belts. This single cylinder engine was claimed to have put out two and a half horsepower while weighing only 115 pounds, which means it could push you along at 50 miles an hour, pretty impressive back then. Now let's check out some of the other bikes in this cool exhibit. Now the heart of Indian motorcycles is its race heritage. These things were born to run and this 28 hill climber, well, the guy riding this thing had to have serious cojones. Check it out. There's no shocks, there's no brakes, it's a V-twin flathead engine that all it's going to do is propel somebody forward up a hill. No brakes, no shocks. It takes, <laughs> it takes a real man to ride that sucker up a hill. Now a lot of people don't know, and what I didn't know until I came here, is that Indian was right there alongside Jeep and Harley Davidson helping turn the tide in World War II. But out of these bikes, this is the one that got my attention. It has skis. Why does it have skis? I don't know. They're outriggers. It's got a big knobby rear tire. Obviously it's meant to propel this motorcycle in a freaking snowdrift. I grew up in Canada. I've never seen this. My guess is that coming home from a pub one night, if you go into a snowbank, this will help you keep upright. But Wow, what an interesting piece of history that is. That's wacky. And there's tons of stuff to see here. And they're constantly changing the display, so you never see the same thing twice. You owe it to yourself to come to the AACA Museum here in Hershey, Pennsylvania. For us, we've seen enough eye candy. It's time to go back, get back to work on the Camaro. After one more scene of the movie. Oh, you're kidding me.